Um, so one of the first questions that's usually asked about simulation detectors is why would why would I want to choose this over something else that's available? Um, and really the major advantage of scintillators is that they're water equivalent for both megavoltage photons and electrons. Um, so the, the um, key point is that you're not changing the radiation interaction right there at the point of measurement. Um, and then, of course, having to do uh, additional corrections for that perturbation. They can be made very small, and so they're useful for small fields in that you're you're measuring over a very small um, physical area. Um, they've been shown to be dose and dose rate independent for standard radiotherapy beams, um, energy independent as well. Um, and then the, the beam quality correction factor um, of unity really does reflect back to the, the true water equivalents of this detector um, across the various spectra. So even as your field size decreases, um, that beam quality correction factor remains one. There is a very small temperature dependence uh, with this device. It's about a tenth of a percent per degree. Um, so if you're using it just at room temperature all the time for QA measurements, um, that can generally be ignored. The other advantage is that there are no ferromagnetic materials in the optical fiber or the, the organic scintillator itself, and so they can be used with MR Linux. Our scintillator, I guess I mentioned, it's an organic scintillating material. Um, it does produce light in the blue portion of the spectrum. Um, our original device, the W1, had a one millimeter diameter and three millimeter long scintillator um, coupled to a PMMA optical transfer fiber. With the W2, we provide both a one by one and a one by three fiber. Um, you do have to correct for the Cherenkov light that's produced within that optical transfer fiber, however. Um, so we've implemented a two-channel chromatic correction. It's based on a publication from Matthew Guyot et al. Uh, in 2011. Um, and I'll explain how that works on the next slide. Scintillators also are, are not what are considered absolute dosimeters. It's not something that you can send to a calibration lab, um, get a, a um, calibration factor that's traceable to national standards, and then be able to use that for a few years. Um, they do require reference uh, a comparison with a, a calibrated dosimeter in order to give a, a reference dose um, and, and periodically recalibrate it at your machine as, in, as it accumulates dose. That's if you want your output in terms of dose. So for that two-channel chromatic correction, we do divide the, the measured optical signal into two portions of the spectrum, the blue and the green. Um, we call it blue and green color channels. Um, our scintillator, is, as I mentioned, is centered in this blue portion of the spectrum. Cherenkov light is a broad spectrum contaminant, so it's present in both channels. So the idea behind this two-channel correction is that you'd make a measurement um, with the scintillator in two different configurations. You're keeping the dose to the active portion of the scintillator constant, but you're changing the amount of optical fiber that's being irradiated. So only this Cherenkov contribution changes. Um, it creates a change in both the blue and the green portions of the spectrum. So we look at the difference in signal in the blue channel versus the difference in signal in the green channel and create what's called a Cherenkov light ratio, which is a correction factor um, that's used for subsequent measurements to remove the Cherenkov signal from the blue channel measurement based on the amount of signal that's measured in the green channel. If you'd like to apply a dose calibration to your device, um, you would give it a known dose in your reference field size, and then that becomes a, a essentially a um, unit conversion, um, just a constant that's multiplied by this corrected signal in order to give you the output in terms of dose. So with the original device, the W1, we had provided a um, water equivalent material slab that, that allowed or that had a milled out channel for the minimum fiber configuration where you have as little fiber in the field as possible and then a larger um, channel wrapped around for the maximum fiber configuration where you have more, uh, more fiber, more Cherenkov signal. This is an option with the W2 as well, um, but with the W2, we, um, we provide a, um, a jig that can be used in the water tank in order to do this measurement in a smaller field. This will fit within a 10 by 10 field in the water tank. Um, 
You can also use a rectangular field, either in this slab or um, with the, the simulator set up for scanning. Um, rotate your collimator by 90 degrees and, and change the amount of fiber in the field that way, um, while again making sure that you're maintaining the dose to the simulator equivalently. So the W1 simulator was our first generation device. It's been on the market since 2014, um, so almost 10 years now. It has uh, that one millimeter diameter, three millimeter long active area. And there are quite a few publications available for this one. One of the most notable is the joint publication from the AAPM and the IAEA on small field dosimetry. So that's TRS-483, um, which lists the W1KQ as unity in all of the tables that it shows up in. Um, so here again, as this is just an example of the, the um, 10 megavoltage energy with or without flattening filter, as the field size changes, that spectrum changes slightly, and you can see there's no um, a change in the response of the simulator as a result of that, those spectral changes. Um, this was a single, is still a single point measurement system. Um, it was not necessarily designed for water tank scanning, although it is water um, tight, it can be used in a water tank, um, but it does require a two channel electrometer in order to perform that Cherenkov subtraction calculation. The more recent developments, we've uh, created the W2, um, which has a user replaceable fiber and a dedicated optics and electronics unit called the Max SD. So with this configuration, um, it's a user replaceable fiber, um, so we can provide it with both a one by one and a one by three simulator. And the rationale for providing both um, really is twofold. One is that um, we know people are looking for the one by one millimeter resolution in order to get as little volume averaging as possible. But there are scenarios in which it's very nice to be able to compare some of these measurements with the original W1 publications with the exact same fiber, exact same uh, geometric configuration. The one by three millimeter fiber also gives you three times the signal. So for water tank scanning, of the, the slightly larger end of the small field range, sometimes it's nice to have that higher signal to noise ratio from the larger scan or detecting detector. Um, with the, the um, development of the MaxSD as well, we're taking um, every 10 millisecond integration of the signal from the scintillator and performing the Cherenkov correction and then converting it into an analog output, a current output that can be sent directly to your water tank electrometer um, for small field scanning. So that setup looks a little bit like this. Um, we have an adapter sleeve that helps um, increase the stem size of the simulator so it can be held in a standard chamber holder. Um, the fiber itself then is attached to the max, or is, is um, connected to the input of the max SD um, and then there's a triaxial output from the max SD that goes into your water tank scanning electrometer. Um, so from the standpoint of the water tank um, it really looks like a diode. It's a detector that you don't apply bias to but when the beam is on um, the water tank system gets a signal and um, can proceed with collecting data for the scan. Um, I will say you need to scan slowly with it. It's a low signal to noise device. Um, and so the, the longer integration time at each measurement, um, we usually recommend about one second per measurement, um, gives you much better data. Um, this is just an image of that minimum fiber versus maximum fiber configuration in the water tank. Oh, I should say you don't need to perform this every time you scan. This would be a, a one time prior to scanning and then occasionally um, afterwards. The, the signal from the simulator tends to decrease by about 2% for every thousand gray that the simulator receives. Um, and so it does need periodic recalibration throughout its lifetime. Um, from one of the early publications on the W2, there was a comparison done between the water tank scanning and uh, gaff chromic film measurements. Um, this is an example of the one centimeter field. Um, the red dots are the W2 measurements and the, the blue dots are the film scan. Um, so there's excellent agreement there. 
between the measurement and the, um, sorry, the water tank scanning with the W2 um, and the film. They also verified that just as with the W1, there were no dose rate dependencies seen up to 2400 mu per minute and no dose dependencies seen from that 1 centigrade to 4000 centigrade range. Um, it's been used for some patient-specific measurements as well. Um, there was a publication out of um, the University of Alabama at Birmingham and Richard Popple's group um, looking at agree the agreement between the W2 measurement and film measurement for um, varying rapid arc targets, uh, treatments, treating targets down to a three millimeter diameter target. Um, and they got excellent agreement again between film and W2, really within the, the variability and uncertainty of the film measurements. Um, I like the, the image that they had though, um, just to show that, that the, this is a, a chamber plug um, for a, inside a lung, lung equivalent phantom. Um, it's very hard to pick out the tip of the scintillator, um, only, well, because it's water equivalent. Um, so we do provide it with a, a dummy fiber with a BB um, in order to uh, allow you to find it in your treatment planning um, or if you're doing imaging alignment um, for your measurement QA. Um, there's a, a way to see where the tip, that active uh, point of measurement of the scintillator is. So that was all I had planned to go through today. Um, I know that was a fairly quick presentation, um, but we're all rather busy people too, so I don't want to keep you too long. Um, if there are questions, please feel free to enter them. Um, I don't see any in there yet, but I would be happy to um, answer any questions that you might have. Um, you can always follow up with us either um, through the websites um, or directly via email. Um, we'd love to hear from you. And thank you again for your time. I do appreciate it.